Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to look at some finding some probabilities when the information is given to us in a chart called a histogram. Um, there will be some other charts here, but mainly from histograms. Now, so a histogram is just a chart, a bar chart, that tells you what's happening over time, right, or just a, a visual representation of the material. So you need to make sure that you're very careful with these in the material that you're reading and how you read it and what you need to have where, right? Now, again, we're still talking probability, so it's just the number of successes over the total number of outcomes. But this is the first area in the... This is the first area in this NCEA where you're going to not only have to come up with the number, but you're also going to have to describe what you see and you're going to have to make some um, predictions about what could happen later, all right? So we've got a really good, good example. We're going to go through some simple examples. Then we have another really good example to talk you, about, to through, talk you through about what I mean, all right? So let's just go to the book. All right, so, so these, these start on page 15. Now, I've purposely had some time. This is, this is a short topic, but it's really important. And you almost always, every NCEA that I've seen so far, which granted has not been that many, has had one of these on it. So, and, you, and it's given the students trouble because they don't pay close enough detention, attention. You have to be super organized and focused when you see these because they're going to think that they're so easy that they can ask you to make predictions and that kind of thing from them. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. So here is an example of a bar chart. And along the bottom, we have the number of siblings. And along the side, we have the frequency. And so people were just asked how many siblings they had, and they made this chart. So for example, people who had two siblings, if you just read straight up from there and over, 13 people said they have three siblings. Do you remember how to read these? Very simple. So just find the one that you're looking for and then go up to the top and whatever number, and of course this is, oops, sorry. <laughs> this one's halfway between 12 and 14, so 13. So 13 people responded, okay? Now, to get a probability from that, this would be the number of successes, right? the probability of, of them answering two, but how would I get the number on the bottom? What would I have to do? Okay. Exactly, everybody who did it. And sometimes they'll tell you, and other times you just have to go through and add them up. Most of the time, you'll have to go through and add them up, okay? But in this case, we know that it was 50 students. But again, remember, you could also find that number by simply adding up the number at the height of each bar, okay? This is nice and unusual that they tell you the number first. Usually you have, to, you have to find it, okay? So finding a probability from these is not a problem usually. What the problem, where the problem comes from is when you're asked to make projections or talk about and describe what you're seeing. And so let's just move to number eight. It's on a couple pages in your book. Pass it. Number eight is a really good one. You're going to do the others as well, but number eight really talks about everything we're going to do. Maybe it's not number eight. Maybe it's number five. Yeah, it's number five. I'm sorry. I was thinking number eight, but it's no big deal. So here we have Ellie performed an experiment by tossing a six-sided die on a, a large number of times and recorded the results. The graph of the distribution is shown below. So here's your first clue that this one's going to require some work. She tossed it, what? A large number of times. And we have no idea what that large number of times is. So this is an example of when we're going to have to go through the chart and add them all up. So hopefully somebody has a calculator because I'm not doing this for you. Pardon? You've already done that? Excellent. So just the top, or does it mention it somewhere? No? You're just good at that? Oh, wow. Okay. So just add up all of those numbers, and we have 90. Is that what you said? Okay. Yes. Okay. So we have 90 trials then. That means 90 times she 
she threw the die, yeah? And each one of the trials has a, a number assigned to it that we're gonna read from the chart. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna give you several things. So remember on a die, you can either get a one, two, three, four, five, or six, right? The most you can get. And this shows the frequency of how many times. So how many times did she toss the die? 90. So that was one of the questions. And that's gonna be important because that's gonna be the total number of outcomes on your, in your probabilities, okay? Based on her results, what was her experimental probability of getting a six? Well, here's six. How many times did she get a six? 13. Thir 13, yeah, 13 out of how many times? So remember, do not forget your probability statement. You need to write out the probability statement. The probability of a six was 13 out of 90. Always put that in your calculator and turn it into a decimal rounded to what? Four decimal places. So what's my completed answer then? 0.1444. Does it repeat or is that just where it ends? Okay, it just repeats. Okay, there you go. All right, so, so far, so good. Pretty easy there. But again, we had to combine all those, all those numbers to find out what that bottom number was going to be. Okay? All right, let's move on. What is the theoretical probability of getting a six when a die is tossed? <clears throat> Remember, this is the mathematics. How many sixes are there? One. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Out of how many numbers? Six. So, so the theoretical probability of a six is one in six, but let's turn that into a decimal so that we, because they're going to want us to compare it to the other one. So what is that as a decimal? Zero point, I'm sorry, what? Ones and then six is repeating, so that means it would round to a seven at the end. Yeah. Okay. Now, what did we get from her pro her probability? Zero point one four four four. So now we can compare those. If you look at the theoretical probability, it's bigger than her probability. Yeah. But remember, experimental probability will not approach theoretical probability until you've done it, what? Thousands. Thousands of times, yeah? And it may never get there, but it will eventually approach theoretical probability, all right? So that's why these numbers are different. But hers is not too far off, and she only did it 90 times, only 90, okay? That it, and that's how you're gonna explain it, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's what this part is about. Now here's what it is. Explain why your answers in B and C may be different. Why did she get a number that, was not, that did not match it? Because theoretical probability, right? Or I'm sorry, experimental probability will only approach, don't say match ever, will only approach theoretical probability if the experiment is done many, many, many times. You don't need to say thousands because that's being too specific, but just say many, many, many times. Or you could say many, many more than 90 times, right? Certainly, she only did it 90 times, which sounds like a lot, but it's not, okay? And that's why they're different, right? So you need to justify it with your knowledge about what the difference of the two is, okay? Good. Now. If she tossed a fair die 120 times, how many sixes would you expect her to get? Now, this is not based on the theoretical probability. We're talking about she's doing it, right? So, or we could do both. So what are we dealing with here? This is the last thing we did. If she did it 120 times, what's that called? Ex expected. expected number, expectation, right? How many would she expect to get if she did it 120 times? And so what you can do to answer this question is you can compare both her probability as well as the theoretical probability. Cover all your bases. So theoretically, the probability of getting a six is 0 0.1667 times, how many times are you gonna throw the die? 120, multiply that out, and that's going to give you the theoretical probability of it. 20. It comes out 20. So we'd expect her to get it 20 times, right? Now, 
You could also then, if you want, talk about her probability, but what's wrong with her probability? Yeah, she hasn't done enough times, so her probability is still changing, isn't it? It's going to be going up as she goes through. So you, um, so you could still talk about that. So make sure that if you do this, you need to say the theoretical probability of that would be this number times the 120 or 20, right? And then you could mention talk at her or what her probabilities are. They may even ask you a question about it, but we'll see. Okay, so do you see the importance of doing that, those comparisons? It's going to be really important to you on the test. If she performed her experiment again, what would you expect her graph to look like? So if she did, if she did this experiment again, what would you expect this graph to look like? Probably similar, right? What you'd get is that you get a pretty uniform distribution, wouldn't you? Because... Yeah, now, you're still likely to get, remember when we did it, we got the four over and over and over again that time in the classroom? You're likely to get one number that simply occurs more frequently than others, um, and it's usually a number, a number in the middle. In this case, it was a two, though. But, you're, but, but if you did this experiment again, you would likely see different but similar results, okay? The key word there is different. Every time you do an experiment, you expect to see, to get different results, but you would also expect them to be similar to the results you got in this case, right? Because throwing a die is a pretty, it's going to, it's not, it's very unlikely that it's going to surprise you too much, okay? But the key phrase there is different results. So every time you perform an, an experiment, you expect to get different results. Right? But in this case, we would expect them to be similar. Now, would that be the case if you, say, were asking people their opinions? No. No, you might get, you're going to expect to get different results, and you cannot count on them being similar unless your population is very similar, right? Okay? So keep, what, keep in mind what you're experimenting with. She set her computer to do a simulation for 1,000 tosses of a die. How would you expect the graph of simulated results to differ from the graph of her experiment? So what, would, what do you think would be different from this one? Wouldn't the computer use Well, it would just do a simulation of the experiment. So it, it, would be just throwing, it would just be pretending to throw a die. So it would be doing an experiment, but, she, it's got, but the computer is going to do it, what? A thousand times. So what's, what's that going to do to the graph? So it's still an experiment. Right? Because it's not calculating an expected number, but what would, what would happen to this graph, do you think? You, yeah, it would become more and more uniform, exactly. We would expect that each number started appearing the same number of times. Now, but another way of explaining that is that if she did it a, thou that if they did it a thousand times, we would expect that experimental probability to approach what? The theoretical probability, right. So the graph would become more uniform, right? And we would expect the probability, the theoretical probability to, I'm sorry, the experimental probability to approach the theoretical probability for each number, all right? So do you see how you have to talk about each one back and forth and describe what you're seeing? And that's the key to making these with the histograms and the bar charts work. Okay? All right. So, you, so I think that one probably has the most questions and the most complex questions. So they're not bad if you know what it is that they're looking for. But if you just saw, uh, if you performed an experiment again, what would you expect a graph to look like? <laughs> if you just saw that cold, that might cause you some issues. But that's why I wanted to go through some of these. Okay. So what we're going to do is you're just going to work on some of these from the book. All of the answers are in the back. I want you to check to make sure, watch what they say, because what they say is what NCEA is going to want. And while you're doing that, I'm going to look at, at Education Perfect and see if I can find some past exam questions that are like these that you can do as well. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to get up to page 18. So what is that, page 15 to 18? 
pages 15 to 18, read the probabilities and work from there. Okay?